Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. This is Guns and Gadgets, the premier source for Second Amendment news. If it's Second Amendment news you're after, you have found your home. Subscribe to the channel down below and I'll bring you that information every single day, no matter where it happens in this country, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And today I'm going to tell you about another governor who has signed a, sorry for the traffic, signed a Bruin resp response bill into law, thus uh, stomping on the Second Amendment for the citizens of Maryland. And then I'm going to tell you that a lawsuit was dropped immediately following that. Um, so, excuse me, I'm in my living room. I'm not going down to the studio. We're packing today. I'm extremely frustrated. And I needed to just sit here and listen to the birds chirp. Take a breath. Please bear with me. So this is Governor Wes Moore. Of course, he's a Democrat uh, in Maryland. And uh, today he signed two bills into law, SB1 and HB824. Now they're selling these bills, now laws, that they will combat violence and cut crime, but they won't do anything to do anything about crime or criminals because they go soft on them. This just makes it harder for law-abiding citizens to carry a gun and protect themselves from the vast uh, criminal empire that is known as like Baltimore and, and the similar and the like. Um, so this is a response to Bruin. Maryland had one of the toughest uh, state schemes as far as getting a permit. It was like less than one. I think it was like 0.19% of the population was able to get a uh, a permit. And I'm just going to my notes real quick because I'm not in the studio and I'm not going down there. Uh, SB1 will prevent residents, even if they have a permit, a concealed carry permit, they cannot carry or transport a firearm on any private property without the permission of the owner. And it also will ban people from carrying a firearm in areas such as schools, polling places, sport complex, or any score sport complexes, or anywhere where alcohol is served. So if you want to go to a restaurant, you can't protect yourself, you can't defend yourself. It's crazy, ridiculous. Now the second bill is HB824, and that is going to make it harder to get a permit to carry in Maryland. It's raising the application fee from $75 to $125, thus affecting more people who have uh, less income, right? So they're going to make it more expensive for people to access their own right. And renewal costs will go from $50 to $75. Also expands firearm requirements related to their training course. Also requires applicants to submit two sets of fingerprints and increase the age to lawfully possess a firearm from 18 to 21. And there's a, a safe storage um, to this as well. Changes some things with Trace. A couple other things, but know that this is their Bruin response bill. Now on screen is the lawsuit that was filed today in response of the governor signing these bills into law. And this was brought, as you can see here, the, the defendants on the on the page here. It's Maryland State Rifle and Pistol Association, along with uh, Susanna uh, Kipke. And they're going after the governor, Wes Moore, and Ronald Butler Jr., who is the superintendent of the Maryland State Police. I'm going to go over the introduction real quick. It says the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees the right of the people to keep and bear arms. In the Bruin decision, the Supreme Court made it clear that the text of the Second Amendment protects the right to keep and bear arms in the home and the right to bear outside the home equally. Nothing in the Second Amendment's text draws a home slash public distinction with respect to the right to keep and bear arms. This guarantee protects the right of ordinary law-abiding citizens to carry handguns publicly for self-defense. Two at issue in Bruin was the New York law that prohibited the granting of licenses to carry a handgun outside of the home for self-defense unless the applicant could demonstrate that they had proper cause for obtaining a permit to carry a handgun. Bruin struck down that requirement, holding that the Second Amendment precludes licensing laws under which authorities have discretion to deny concealed carry licenses, even when the applicant satisfies statutory criteria, usually because the applicant has not demonstrated cause or suitability for the relevant license. Three, one month after the Supreme Court decided Bruin, the Maryland Appellate Court invalidated Maryland's law, which similarly required an applicant for a carry permit to demonstrate that he has good and substantial reason to wear, carry, or transport a handgun, such as a finding that the permit is necessary as a reasonable precaution against apprehended danger. 
The court held that the similarities between the Maryland statute and the New York statute invalidated in Bruin were self-evident and that Bruin expressly noted that Maryland was one of six states with the law analogous to New York's. Two more quick paragraphs. In response to and in defiance of Bruin and Rounds, Maryland enacted Senate Bill 1 and House Bill 824, both of which take effect on October 1, 2023. Through these bills, Maryland replaced one blatantly unconstitutional licensing regime with another blatantly unconstitutional licensing regime. The bills contain unconstitutional restrictions on where and how ordinary law-abiding Maryland citizens with a carry permit may exercise their right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside the home, unconstitutional requirements for obtaining a carry permit, and provisions unconstitutionally compelling speech from property owners who do not wish to prohibit ordinary law-abiding Maryland citizens with a carry permit from carrying a handgun on their property. These new laws, in addition to certain challenge restrictions that pre-existed Senate Bill 1 and HB 824 destroy the right recognized in Bruin, the right of ordinary law-abiding citizens to bear arms for self-defense outside the home in the state of Maryland. Plaintiffs include an ordinary law-abiding and responsible citizen of Maryland and an advocacy organization representing the interests of ordinary law-abiding and responsible citizens in Maryland who wish to exercise their fundamental individual right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside the home and would do so but for the reasonable fear of prosecution as a result of defendant's enforcement of the unconstitutional laws and regulations challenged in this lawsuit. So they're looking to preliminarily and to permanently enjoin uh, and get an injunction and all that stuff too. So uh, I'm glad the lawsuit was filed immediately. I hope they have all their ducks in a row because you might only get one shot at this. Uh, but let me know what you guys and gals think about this. Another state saying, you know what, we're not going to listen to the Supreme Court. We're just going to do our own damn thing anyway. Somehow, these politicians, these pompous, vile tyrants, need to be held accountable. What do you think down below? Guys and gals, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. That's what it's for. I'll have information down below on this. I'll have the lawsuit down there. Also, if you want to get a hold of the governor and tell him what a piece of trash he is, I'll have his information down there as well frustrating day. I love each and every single one of you. Please help me get to the 700,000 subscribers before the end of the year by subscribing to the channel down below. If you think you are subscribed, double check. YouTube's playing games right now, and I appreciate you all just taking a second to take a peek. And with that, I will see you on the next one. Take care.